Hey, savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be discussing a wonderful command called DD. So what is DD? Perhaps it's the Disk Destroyer. DD is a great program that allows you to work with devices on Linux. It can also be used for important tasks like generating large blank files. So one thing that we can do here is generating blank files. You might be asking why this one would be even necessary. Well, if you think about it, you can generate a swap file, which is technically just the file with nothing in it until it's used for overflow of memory. Number two, you could also use it to clone things over between partitions, disks, and these will be one-to-one -one clones. So the complete contents of a hard drive storage disk can be copied over with a one-liner using DD. We'll spend some time and show you how to use DD in a moment. But before we do, make sure to subscribe below. Only about 3% of you are actually subscribed to the channel. That way you can follow more learning videos. So what does DD actually stand for? Well, this is a little debated, but it seems like it was named after the IBM JCL command, which was capital DD and stands for data definition. I personally still like disk destroyer just because it's a forewarning that you can easily destroy your disk using this command if you don't use it properly. Nothing to be scared about. We just have to make sure we're using the command in a proper fashion. All right, I opened up a terminal and I'm going to show how to use the DD command now. We'll talk about some of the options that you can use with DD. For example, let's create a new swap file for the system. We can do this by typing in DD space IF, which is an input file. So there's a special input file that we want to use for this case. It's going to be under dev slash zero. And that's just a file with a bunch of nulls or zeros and gives you a stream of zero bytes. And we'll put this stream into OF. So our output file is what OF stands for. You can put this anywhere. I'm going to put it in temp. I'm going to call it a swap file. After that, I get to specify a block size if I want. So BS, and then I do an equal. This is how many bytes you want to copy at a time, also known as the block size. And it's in bytes. So if I wanted, let's say, if I wanted one megabyte or let's say even two megabytes copied at a time, I could do 20, 48. That represents two megabytes in bytes. So if we wanted a two gig file here, we'll put count equal to some number. Well, this number is actually based off of what block sizes you're copying over. So 2048, that's two megs each. If I wanted two gigabytes, I would need 500 blocks of 2048 in order to create that two gig file size. This is the basic way of using DD. And you can also imagine I could have changed this to something like dev SDA, some number or partition straight over to another partition if I wanted. I'll show you that in a moment. Let's hit uh, enter and see what happens here. That was written pretty quickly. So let's check out our temp folder by CD into temp. I now have a swap file that you can see right here. Let's list it out. And I did my math wrong. That was a gig because I actually cut it in half. I'm using 2048, so I should have done a thousand. Either way, no big deal. This is a gig file. So what I'm saying is if I actually wanted a two gig file, I could have done something like this, count 1000 and then block size 2048. Now I copy that over. Let's check again what the swap file is. Now it's 2,048,000 bytes or two gigabytes. If I wanted, I could have also copied, uh, let's do 1024. That's a block size of one meg. And I would need 2000 of those in order to get a two gig swap file. So I can do that and let's see again. Now it's the same thing, 2048000, awesome. So now you kind of know how to use DD. A couple other options you can use is skip and then some number of blocks. This will skip over the first number of specified blocks and then start copying over. Let's say you didn't want to copy some information at the very beginning part of a file or storage disk, you can use this skip option. Anyways, I'll show you one last thing here. If we do DDIF equals, so our input file equals dev, perhaps we want to uh, do SDA. So SDA actually represents the entire disk here. Uh, and then I can do OF equals temp 
and do something like storage, I can name it whatever I want. This would actually copy over the entire contents of the disks, including all partitions into a file called storage, which is absolutely amazing. That's how you can also either save the entire disk to a file or perhaps copy from one disk to another disk or even across the network, copy the contents of a disk to a whole nother computer that has another disk. That's why this DD command is absolutely powerful and amazing to use. I use it all the time in production environments. Whenever I need to make a cloned production environment, it's my go-to choice. You also have to probably specify some kind of block size. So copying over in blocks of 1024, uh, you don't need count for this one because you wanna copy the entire contents of SDA over. Uh, you use count when you wanna actually specify how many bytes to copy. Well, there's kind of an overview of the DD command. We're going to follow this up with places again you can use DD. So again, if you wanted to copy, let's say from one storage disk, uh, we'll call it SDA over to another one, maybe SDX. And let's say this all just exists on one computer, comp one. This is one method. Uh, perhaps you have a network. So you have this huge network and somehow you have two devices. So we'll say comp one and a computer two, comp two, and you have ethernet between them. You can actually copy the contents of one disk. We'll call it SDX over ethernet to another one called SDX. X meaning you can copy it to whatever disk you want. Partitions, disks, all can be copied between computers as well. Another use case, of course, locally on a computer. So if we just had a computer here, we'll call it comp one. In comp one, we can take files or partitions or entire disks and copy them straight to a file. And then we can freely move that file around the system as we see fit. Again, probably one of the best use case scenarios for me at least is using it to copy whole entire disks across networks. So that's this one right here. That way I can simply clone over entire drive onto similar hardware, which is pretty wild when you think about it, all using the DD disk destroyer method, disk destroyer method. And now you realize also why people like to call it disk destroyer because if you get the IF input file versus the output file wrong, you've just effectively copied over the contents of the wrong side of things, therefore destroying a partition disk or file. Well, that's about it. Just wanted to teach you a little bit about DD. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.